Clara had lookout post, 21st of August, on duty, Coast Watcher Neary. 1am, two more horses have swung out to sea. 3.30am, visibility good. Da, is that you, Da? 5.48am, the Black Knight can't bear to think, she is not coming, my heart sink. <laughs> some ways, I admire you. I mean, I envy you. You know what you are like. You are like the complete opposite of a Saint Bernard. I mean, you can slip out a dead body in the middle of the ocean. And in other ways, I don't envy you at all. Because instead of having a cute little cask of brandy tied underneath your chin, you're a chronic alcoholic. <laughs> a man? Oh, that's where I'm going, Mr. Tilly. I want to cast off the shackles of a workaday world. I want to see the lights of the big city. I want to let the cat out of the bag. I want to say, oh, I'm sorry I can't do two. What about four instead? Ah, uh, Michigan, the hustle and bustle of the big city. I want to be jostled in the street by people I don't know. <laughs> Jostle, Mr. Tilly. Stop it. Uh, Twenty dollars, so that's half for me and half for you. Five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Soothing, isn't it, Henry? The way it's just, you know, money. Oh, America. And I'm taking Lizzie with me, because I've never forgotten what my dad said to me. Right before he died, he put his hands on my shoulders, he looked me dead in the eyes, and he said, Do you know what he said, Mr. Tim? No. He said, son, you're as useless as a bucket of black waves. Now get out and shut the door behind you, you useless little prick. <laughs> and that's exactly what I'm going to do, as soon as I've enough money. Because we all have to shut the door behind us sometime, don't we? Don't we, Mr. Tim? Yep. Are you going to shut the door behind you, Mr. Timmy? Yep. Do you think Lizzie will like it in Michigan? Yep. Do you and Mrs. Timmy want to come with us? Couldn't think of anything I'd like more. Me? No. <laughs> it's like when you're out walking and it's dark and a dog suddenly jumps out at you. And you get such a shock, you almost die right there on the spot. But the dog's tied up. Holy Christ, the noise of it! And the sheer utter violence it'll do if it manages to get loose. You're so terrified, you throw up right there on the road. The smell of the sick only drives the beast into more of a rage. <laughs> so you poke at it with a stick. You wound it. But then you notice its tether is only looped over an old post. And it's only a matter of time before it gets free. No, your legs won't carry you. There's no one around to say goodbye to. So you just piss yourself with dreadful tears. <laughs> it's like that. Only there's no dog. <laughs> Henry? over involvement in what was essentially a local dispute. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jean. Here you are so far from home and I'm going on like I don't know what. Alice. Let's do something. Uh, Henry, I'm talking to Jean. Um, Henry, this is Jean. Yes, we met. <laughs> the other night when he, uh, when you washed up. <laughs> but, uh, no, you're looking much better now, Lieutenant Dumas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. much more uh, alive. <laughs> yeah, nothing like a bit of sea air when you've been lost at sea. Yeah. You stop encouraging her. I'm not. Uh, Henry's going to America when the war's over, aren't you? Yeah, to Michigan. No, never been. Henry! I'm talking to Lieutenant Dumas. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know if she likes it. You ask her, I'm not asking her. <laughs> she looks like who? 
I don't know who Veronica Lake is. No, I didn't see Sullivan's Travels. Or Gun for Hire. No, I don't have any films around here. Someone burnt down the cinema. <laughs> Finished? Now, I'd like to talk to you about your report. Specifically, the bit about your father. Your dead father. What's popcorn? Henry! <laughs> Sorry, uh, that's the way though. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Craig. <laughs> 3 30 a.m. Wind fidgety from the northwest. Sea butterflies in its stomach. There is a ghostly figure walking the beach. Ghost strongly resembles my da. <laughs> ah, only in Hollywood. Henry! <laughs> His eyes were like cups of tea with too much milk, Mr. Tim. 3.35 a.m. Ghost is my da. <laughs> we tore the legs off some crabs, then we made a sand fort, and I made a little airfield for Lieutenant Dumas's plane. Yeah. Not at all, you're welcome. Yeah, it's a Type 7 torpedo attack boat. Forgotten Captain likes it here because it's Besonders good snorkel merkelik kite. That means it's good for snorkeling, Mr. T. No, Gene, I'd love to go flying with you. Well, <laughs> Lieutenant Dumas, you, you said you were going to come on the submarine with me. We can all go together another time, Henry. Me and Gene just want to be alone together. Fine. Yeah. Lieutenant Dumas said I could go on a plane. Henry? Everyone's travel arrangements sorted. I want to go on a plane. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I remember being in the water, the sound of the waves, the cold. The next thing I, I hear singing, and then a voice, your voice, Alice. Take your glasses off, Gina. I can't see your face. That's crazy, but it was the most beautiful thing. Then I see your face looking down on me, and it's hard to describe, because... Why? No, no, not your face. What I mean is, I don't know how long I was in the water. Days, weeks. I don't know how long I was out for. You see my shirt? What time did you come to bed? I don't know. Three, four. I didn't wake you, did I? Oh, uh, Henry said he was swapping with you. Swapping with why? He doesn't have anything I like. You're kidding. Lieutenant D, I've taken your shirt. This is for you. It was my da's. He was wearing it when he died. <laughs> You found me, Alice. I didn't say anything stupid, did I? Well, you weren't making much sense. You were mumbling and cursing a bit too. About to play mostly, but uh, then you said sorry for being a dumb kid, and then you mentioned a Helen Schulberg. Really? Mm. She was my fourth grade teacher. Mm. And then you asked me my name. And then he cried, and then he tried to kiss me. That's embarrassing. And it sounds like you're swallowing half the world. <laughs> you know what I think, Eduardo? I think if you spend a little more time at home with your wife, you wouldn't be as bitter as a bag of old cat's piss. Really? Is that what you think? Yeah, that's what I think, Mr. Blue Balls. Mr. What? Take the day off. Put on some romantic music, you know, some of that tin whistle famine shit you like. <laughs> She's got a sexy number on. You uh, take her upstairs and you just <clears throat> just lie back and let her lick the smell of pennies off those stupid fat fingers of yours. You disgust me. That's the British tabloid for you, isn't it? The kiss of life. Kiss it. Uh, 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 oh, oh, uh, and uh, what's the cartoon of? A bunch of drunken Irish monkeys in a U-boat <laughs> eating my calf. Uh, doing what? Oh, oh, uh, with the periscope. Oh, oh great. Mount to mount! Uh, uh, I, I think it, it, it's a <laughs> No, no, not the fact, not the monkeys in the periscope. I mean, that, that, that nearly sees his father. Think of Lizzie! 
Oh, no, 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 nothing, nothing, nothing. Here he's just tending to a wounded seal, that's all. Ah, ah, oh, for fuck's sake, Henry. Well, I say, if Churchill wants to obey because he thinks a dead, alcoholic, wife beating farmer from Carhead is in fact a highly decorated German you don't have to Henry, I'd say for his blood. Henry! See? That's the whole point. Neary's father is dead. He couldn't possibly be in the North Atlantic attacking shipping. <laughs> See, I was at the funeral. See, it was a closed coffin. <laughs> no, I don't know how he knew the code name for the convoy was HFX 305 out of Halifax, Canada, carrying 24,000 litres of fuel oil. Stop thinking of Lizzie. Think of your dead father. Uh, yeah? yeah. Why, Dada? Why? Come back, you bastard. I miss you. She wasn't a lovely girl because she was. Lala O'Flaherty was a classy girl. Eyes like pomegranates. She'd make your tongue wag about then, I swear to God. And those few months we had together, they were some of the best they were. I got the scratches to prove it though. But I show up back in Brooklyn with Lala on my arm, Gloria would kill me. Is that your wife? Yeah. Gloria. What a fucking hallelujah she don't have to be. But you, you ain't married and you love her, right? What then, this Edward guy? You want me to... So I didn't come all this goddamn way not to kill nobody. <laughs> that was what? Three years ago now? You've been here three years. Uh, maybe longer, I don't know. Three goddamn years. And I'm dressing it up a little too, you know? Sometimes, sometimes we don't go anywhere at all. Sometimes he just stops. Those days. Man, those days are the worst. Once, we stopped at the side of the road outside Athlone for two weeks. Have you ever been to Athlone? Ah, oh, man, that's the sixth and seventh circle I held right there. So in the end, what do you got? Not so much a spiritual guide as a know-it-all, swindling, head-patting cripple with a blind dog who can whistle Gershwin's Rhapsody in blue while licking his balls! Yeah, welcome to Ireland, pal! The cave mailer, fuck you too! When I came into my room, I found my father sitting there, looking at everything I had painted. He looked at me, at my cruel little fingers, and in the dark, I could see the whites of his eyes like waves. I should have known. I watched from the window. The tide was high and the sea had risen up into the garden. Charlie was sitting under the tree. My father ran out and he hit him. And he hit him. He kept hitting me. When I went outside, they were gone. 